there are only three things that America will be remembered for 2,000 years from now when they study this civilization. The Constitution, jazz music, and baseball. These are the three most beautiful things this culture's ever created. Historian and essayist Gerard Early. Equal parts simple as it is comprehensive, early satiric list does lack one element so wholly and uniquely American, its driving culture. Pervasive, liberating, there is scarcely an image of the American landscape without the car. However, car culture was never always so integral to the identity of the country. In fact, the story of how automobiles became so vital, so nearly synonymous with the brand of the United States as we know it, is one that is swamped in skepticism and tumultuous obstacles. It is a narrative that began and nearly ended in complete failure. The godfather of American car culture, Horatio Nelson Jackson, catalyzed the movement through the first great cross-country road trip. Through his extraordinary, disastrous outing, Jackson solidified his place in history as the man who opened roads, and subsequently the modern frontier to all. This is Horatio Nelson Jackson, the failure who broke barriers. It all started with a wager, $50 to be precise. Horatio Nelson Jackson was on holiday in San Francisco with his dear wife, Bertha Richardson Wells. After closing the last of yet another attempt at establishing a medical practice in Vermont, Jackson decided to dedicate some time to rest, recreation, and reorganization of his professional priorities. Unlike most of his contemporaries of the blossoming 20th century, Jackson could afford the luxury to flounder. To their marriage, Bertha Wells brought her status and pedigree as Gilded Age royalty, being that she was the sole heiress to her father's prosperous patent medicine empire. As for her husband, well, he possessed an ego that rivaled the magnificence and scale of the dowry she brought with her. One fateful Monday evening, the young couple casually entered San Francisco's university club and left with the eyes of the nation watching to see what happened next. Verbally pugnacious and ever chasing the next adventure, Jackson quickly converted what was meant to be an uneventful night out to an all-out debate with the San Franciscan upper class over the future of the strange and novel fad of the automobile. American sentiments at the time believed the car to be an invention that was fascinating, but nothing more than a glorified hobby horse for the elite. Of course, Jackson was quick to differ. Second to his medical practice, he held an ardent admiration for the innovation and potential represented by the car, and though he himself had only passing experiences with the vehicles, Horatio Nelson Jackson was willing to defend his unpopular opinion at any cost, and so when hazarded $50 to prove the bond of his word, the spirited physician readily accepted the challenge to accomplish a completely unheard of journey, to travel from Oakland, California, to New York City in a car. Being the novice that he was, Jackson enlisted Sewell K. Crocker to be his companion on this monumental journey. Crocker was an extremely able co-driver, as his experience as a mechanic and engineer made driving, however rudimentary it was, practically second nature. On May 23rd, Jackson kissed Bertha goodbye and took off with Crocker in the affectionately named Vermont on the long way home. In their preparation for the unknown, Jackson and Crocker packed ample foodstuffs, a plethora of tools to ensure their survival in any environment, and perhaps what proved to be the most valuable asset of the trip, a Kodak camera to document the expedition. The Vermont was a Winton carriage that was a model considered to be of the highest and most reliable caliber out of all that was available on the market. Despite that reputation, the car could hardly guarantee stability past 20 miles, a fact Jackson and Crocker were soon and harshly made aware of. Not even 15 miles into the trek, the Vermont blew out a tire and the pair used the sole spare that was packed for the trip. Yet, the rupture of the first tire was but a sliver of the seemingly endless troubles the two would encounter on their pilgrimage to the Big Apple. The dimness of the side lanterns makeshifted into headlights made nighttime travel nearly impossible. The lack of maps left the trip guided primarily by intuition, and many of the locals along the way exploited Jackson and Crocker's state of vulnerability 
costing the party the modern equivalent of upwards to thousands of dollars for everything from toll roads to simple directions. Along with these numerous dilemmas Crocker had already warned Jackson to anticipate, unforeseen wrenches to the plan nearly irreversibly compromised the mission. Just northwards of Sacramento, the Vermont was directed 108 miles off course by a woman who promised her family an opportunity to see a real automobile. The Vermont and all her precious cargo were hauled across rivers with raging currents, and Crocker once had to bike an entire marathon in Vail, Oregon to retrieve oil for the Vermont, and even when he returned, it was not enough. Through all the ridicule, weather, and breakdowns the Jackson Crocker adventure witnessed, the American Odyssey forged on. To those who remember Horatio Nelson Jackson's long drive, it was the triumphs peppered along the way that made the journey what it was, more so than the longest detours or the most insurmountable frustrations. Just as there was no trouble in finding difficulties to stall the cross-country venture, Jackson and Crocker luckily had no shortage of amusements and motivations to keep trudging with the Vermont. To start, Jackson had his indomitable pride to defend and a wife to make proud. With $50 in his name at stake, Jackson's letters to Bertha remain an emblem both to his never-faltering persistence to finish and love for his wife. My darling girl, we have crossed the mountains and don't expect to come to any more until we get to into Idaho. We have proven that my machine can do or go anywhere. I feel confident that we can make it. Well, old girl, I'm rather provoked over our delay. I have lost five days. This is a bad start to our first 11 days out. Just as soon as I can get decent tires, we will make a second run. I feel more confident that I can make it to New York. We have had hard luck, but I think it all came at once. We shall now try and make a record trip. The worst of it is over, and everyone is congratulating us. There are others on the way, trying to beat us across. But I feel confident they will give it up. In Caldwell, Idaho, Jackson even bought a pit bull named Bud to keep Crocker and him company for the rest of their venture to the Atlantic. By the time the Vermont arrived in Omaha on the 12th of July, her weary travelers breathed a collective sigh of relief in that from Omaha to New York, the majority of the roads were paved. So marked the last stretch of Horatio Jackson's long way home. Dr. H. Nelson Jackson and Sewell K. Crocker, his chauffeur, finished the first transcontinental automobile trip at half past four o'clock yesterday morning, July 27th, 1903, New York City, New York. National news broke of a mediocre practitioner's extraordinary feat to scale the North American continent from coast to coast in his humble Winton carriage. Along the way, Jackson, Crocker, and Bud achieved local celebrity status, and the spectacle of their cross-country trip promoted the car from mechanical plaything to the pride and necessity of American transportation. Horatio Jackson's journey encompasses the very values enumerated by the Constitution, the soul of American jazz, the relaxation and pastime of baseball. While the old world may have its towering Gothic cathedrals and millennia of history, what makes the United States can be found in a single road trip, any road trip. The freedom and equalizing promise encapsulated by any one drive is so iconic it has been parodied. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something, this is no longer a vacation, it's a quest. Add homage paid to it, and exists in the hearts of countless generations of Americans, irrespective of color, class, or creed. And so while his name may have since faded into obscurity, the impact of his long drive, of the barriers and expectations he's broken, live on as strong as ever. The history of American car culture starts with him, Horatio Nelson Jackson and his long drive. I've been having some hard traveling, I thought you knowed. I've been having some hard traveling way down the road. I've been having some hard traveling, hard rambling, hard gambling. I've been having some hard traveling, Lord. I've been riding them fast rattlers, I thought you knowed. 
I've been riding them flat wheelers.